All right, guys, everybody is ready for game number one of the second semifinal. We are going in to Bonneth versus our play, AKA Gargoyle, and spawning at the bottom right position as the brown Protoss player will be Red Bonneth. And in the top right position, we do have the yellow Terran, Gargoyle, AKA Outplay. Oh man, this is, this is actually crazy. Um, I'm gonna put Gargoyle in the overlay because I think he's more known by that name. Um, but we'll see. Like I, it's actually weird because like you know Foxham was telling me I should put uh, I should put people's most known IDs on things, but like Gar Gorinich has actually changed his ID to Gorinich permanently. He's not not for you anymore. So I think I'm just gonna start calling him Gorinich, and I wonder if I should do the same for our play, even though he yeah, was the... known as Gargoyle. The other thing is, there was a game yesterday you casted for the Gambit's Cup, I think it was, where you had two names in the game, and the two different names in the yeah, overlay, and people yeah. were really confused. That, that's so, exactly the kind of situation I was I was worried about when Foxhand told me about that. But I mean, I, I kind of see both sides, so yeah, I guess I guess we'll see. Because otherwise, people keep asking like, oh, you know, who is our play, and uh, that kind of thing. Oh, thank you for the sub, by the way, Hero Paul. Appreciate it a lot. Hope you're enjoying the games. He All says right. keep up the good work, so I would hope I hope he's enjoying it. If not, maybe just he just likes you messing up a lot, which you don't do. He's just uh just trolling you by sobbing. I don't know, maybe yep. I mean, I could definitely understand if people like watching the stream because I'm just terrible at StarCraft and they enjoy you know, they enjoy the sense of superiority when they can see a recall happening on the minimap and I just have no idea. It's a good time, it's a good time. Yeah, we do see a one Rax expand coming out of Gargoyle. Now Bonneth is not majorly known for his aggression, but he is known for his carriers. <laughs> this is a carrier map. Oh my Can we God. see carriers? But, but they're not cross bonds, though. So it's a bit harder, right? It is a bit harder, but just think, there's even less space for the carriers to move before they're at your base. So, <laughs> you know what? It's bonus. Like, we're, are we? Okay, I'm just gonna call this. We're gonna see Reavers into carriers. Watch this. Watch this space, guys. Oh God. Reavers and you know what, Reavers, Reavers are a good, uh, good uh, counter to the one fa uh, one Rax FE as well. So it's just perfect. It's just all leading into Bonus' perfect playstyle, his perfect game. Indeed. I guess we'll see. How good's the probe micro? He's coming in here. Show us that that Bisu probe micro. It looks like the wall is up here uh, as well at the front. Classic stuff. I think you're. I think you're definitely onto something. Wait a minute. Is is this SCP gonna die? Oh no! He pulled it away at the last. It still can die though. You pull it away and you're like, it's fine. The SCP is gonna live now. And then the probe just chases you into the mineral line and kills you anyway. <laughs> but no, it looks like the marine is gonna push the probe away. He doesn't get a gas steal, but I wasn't expecting Bonner to do that anyway. Uh, he would have had to go into the base straight away to do that. And of course, with the one fat, uh, one rank FE, you can just take the gas of the natural, so it's not too important. But we do see the third pylon coming up in the bottom left of Bonnet's base. Is he going to hide a robotics facility down there? I mean, it feels a little bit slow, to be honest. I think he could have built it already. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe. No, nah, no. Nah, I guess you do need it. You do need that third pylon first. I mean, you could have gone like super fast. Right? Oh wait, wait. Which goon's running into the base? Wait, what? The goon run by. Wait, he runs back. Oh my back. god, why is he? Why is he going back? <laughs> He's like, oh god, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. No, no, no. I don't want to be in here. What the heck happened with that dragoon, Bonnet? You know, I don't know what he was thinking there. The second goon now coming out. I think he's actually looking for the scouting SCV, which uh, swoo uh, snuck all the way yeah, to the Al top left. Alplay, given the fact it's TBP and he went one Rax FE, has scouted extremely late, and he's gonna scout Bonnet last. Oh, and this man. this dragoon is gonna catch the scouting SCV. He's gonna have no idea what Bonnet is doing. He's not gonna see the Nexus. Oh wow, I had no idea that he hadn't even scouted Bonnet's position yet, but Bonnet actually runs the wrong way. He does have another goon coming out that could potentially intercept this, although it's going straight to the Terran base. Oh no, there we go, there we go. He needs to stop him seeing this Nexus. If he can stop him seeing this Nexus, he can do whatever he wants. Because our play will have no idea what to react to. Oh, He'll have this? to play way defensively. Or way more defensively, sorry. Range finished just in time for him there. He actually missed one shot on the ramp, so that was the last shot 
picked off that SCV, otherwise it would have swung around, I think, and saw the Nexus. Now, as you say, our play has no idea what is going on. He does know more goons are coming. He might be able to kind of tell from the goon count that at least it's not a two-gate goon, but other than that, you know, it could be Fast Reaver, it could be the expansion. Who now, knows? there is one gate, one gate Robo. Is that normal for... I mean, it's usually... Ah, uh, he's actually going for a third base. Yep. There we go. The green play. Love it. Uh, I really would like to see him go Reaver off the back of this, uh, just to make sure he can actually take those safely. If you don't go Reaver and you just go into gateways, you are at risk for some like two base timings, uh, like three or four fact. Um, but if you go for the Reaver and you have good control, you can defend against that. Is he getting the support bay? We'll see. The Robo is almost finished now. Of course, it is still pretty greedy. You have a very low goon count, so you got to make sure to preserve those dragoons and not, you know, run into the natural and run back out again. But I think he's going to go Reavers. And our player is actually going two fact starport. Ooh, interesting. Now this is the perfect droppable positions as well, because. Much as I think carriers have less space to go. And oh, we do see the Robo Support Bay, by the way. Robo Support Bay from Bonneth. Yep. Not saying I called it, but I called it. <laughs> now, the thing is, does... I mean, our play surely must be familiar with Bonneth style. And I feel like a fast starport is really good for two reasons. One, if you see the shuttle, you can make a Wraith to chase it down and protect yourself from Reaver Grass. Two... Bonneth obviously is going to have a really low Dragoon count because he still only has one gateway. And that makes it much easier to harass, especially since there's three bases. Not only can you drop, but you can drop the main and then you can run Vultures into the third base, for example. Uh, very, very easy to harass uh, against someone going for the build that Bonneth is going, as long as, you know, you defend the Reaver adequately. So I think this is a good, good, uh, good play here. Yeah, the only problem with the dropship now is Bonnet has done the perfect play for what he needs to do. He's not being overly aggressive with his uh, with his dragoons. As soon as the siege finished, he pulled every single one of his dragoons back. Now, one thing I've come across at least on ladder is I always go for a drop style off of one factory, and if the Protoss just sits back with all his dragoons like this, your drop is going to do zero damage. It's going to be impossible to do any damage with this dropship. I guess we'll see here, he's, he's, the thing about pulling the goons back though is it allowed these four vultures to run around the ground uh, and potentially go for the harass on the third base. Where is the dropship though? Dropship is still in pro uh, production, so you see he's going to wait with the vultures. He wants to go in two locations at once, either the third or the natural. Looks like he's actually using mines to push through though, he's actually not waiting, never mind, he's going into the natural. Can he get through here? There's no building in time, no he doesn't build the building in time, and the vultures run into the main kicks, this is the problem. Oh, oh nice block. Yeah, he blocked with one probe, and that hero probe killed one. But oh, oh my god, and a mind drag killed the other vulture. All right. What a horrible, horrible thing. Oh my god, I think we have the Reaver coming in as well. The Reaver, the shuttle's actually nearly dead. And it's a two tank drop as well, no vultures. Where is he going to send it? Is, I was about to say, is he going to chase down the shuttle? But it really doesn't make any sense to do that, because tanks can't shoot up. But yeah, uh, he's actually going to send it round to the third base. You can actually drop south of the third base because look how uh look how bonus has actually walled that off as well it's going to be really hard for dragoons to get back and defend that but we do see the reaver in the main base does actually deny the uh, third command center how how did that shuttle take so much damage i don't understand was it just i think it bunker? must have yeah it must have flown into the bunker i think he went for some kind of um bulldog on one of the tanks because there was only one or two tanks there at one point but here we go the dropship is coming in do the 5 o'clock position. Is he going into the main? Or is he going into the third? I think going into the main is actually a mistake. There's Dragoons back here defending already. And it looks like he's going to try and siege on some of these probes at the natural and the main at the same oh, time. Oh, the probes are stacking in the main base kicks. He could get a lot of kills. He's got three kills. The Reaper's going back. He's going to get more kills here. Five kills on that tank. Four kills on the other tank. The Reaper's coming in. Six Pro kills on the tank in the main, and the tank at the at the back of the main also has six kills, twelve pro kills in exchange for two siege tanks is not bad. And vultures at the front of the middle only denying this cannon and stopping the probes from mining as well. Really nice move here. Is going to complete his third command center as well. And the reaver really has only got uh, or only had two kills. It's got four now, but has done basically zero economic damage. The one thing is though, how play has uh, killed twelve probes. But, Bonneth is on three Nexuses, that's only four rounds of probes, which isn't that many. Uh, given the fact that our player is actually already behind, his extra factories were really late. I mean, it's nine minutes into the game and he's only now on five factories. And that's not a position you want to be in. He's going to find it really hard to actually expand once Bonneth gets all his gateway production into gear. 
guess he will. Um, but we're gonna have many more drops before then kicks, so the game can definitely swing either way here. I love, I love this play here. This isn't even Terra. Terra was the one dropping before, and our play is doing crazy drops now too. I love this new Terra play, man. No, no, bo I guess, you know what? I guess maybe this is also thanks to not putting Fighting Spirit in the map pool, right? No uh, yep. boring turtle games, but just a lot of action all over the place. And here we go, shuttle coming in once again. It looks like he actually has speed for the shuttle. Can he actually do something here? Dragoon's in the back, Zealot and Reaver at the front. He's not targeting the Reaver. The Reaver gets a great scarab on the two tanks in the back with the Volt. The oh, Wraith rather the Wraith. is here. Oh, and the Wraith gets a shuttle with the Reaver in it. Such a clever play. And the dropship going to the six o'clock kicks. Ooh, he's actually gonna see the base going up as well. Can he actually stop this? Kicks, what can. tech do you think is going up in the Protoss base right now? I'll give you one guess. It's gonna be a flame beacon. Has to be. Indeed it is. Right at the bottom of the base. And you know what? Perfect decision. There's gonna be very little anti-air. Looks like this drop isn't gonna really do too much. He's targeting the Nexus! The He's targeting... Oh, did that... Was that cancel? That was a cancel, yeah. Okay. There was no volleys on it when, it when it went down. But look at this. Losing more units. Our play isn't on enough factories or bases to really be losing uh, units like this without doing too much damage. And you know what? It's 400 minerals for a Nexus. Bonif is at 1k minerals. He doesn't mind having to cancel a Nexus. It's not too much of a big deal. And when you're going carriers, you don't even need that many bases. Uh, Kicks? Bonif didn't get a Citadel. He only has slow zealots. <laughs> He's making triple Stargate carriers with slow zealots. He, he doesn't even uh, want to what? spend the money. He doesn't mind. He's got another speed shuttle. Why would you need speed zealots when you can just drop the drop the zealots quickly? <laughs> the shuttle can move faster than the zealots can. It just makes perfect sense. Oh my god. He's going to be facing a seven, eight factories though. That's a lot of factories coming out from our play who's also going for the 12 o'clock, but I don't know if he's aware of the carriers. And there's going to be three Stargate carrier coming out. Um, and he like he's been losing tanks every once in a while. There's actually loading up two tanks in a dropship. Oh my god, it's lagging. Uh oh. Oh, it's is it saying Rock's X is lagging out for you? Yeah, it is. That's fine right, actually. Okay. He's just the obs. Yeah. Well, rip our observer. Now this is gonna give our play 50 seconds or so of thinking about what he needs <laughs> to do. So this is like I mean Bonnet already knows what he's doing. How is our play going to use this small amount of time to figure out what to do? Is he going to think, have I scanned his main? Because does he know? I don't think he knows the carriers are coming. Because <laughs> if he knows the carriers are coming, he needs to push basically now. Like, he can't wait any longer. He needs to get there before any to. Oh. Hey, we're back. We did it. Oh my god, but look at this. Losing another tank for free. Oh, maybe not. One drone for one tank, but one tank is a very good trade. Oh, it could do a mine bomb! Oh! <laughs> Two yeah, zealots for three tanks. Alplay is going to try and get a fourth base and a fifth base, so I think he knows that he might know the carriers are coming, or he might just be trying to hide a base. But once again, he's sending another two tanks in a drop, and they're not really going to do anything. I guess not. If he goes into the main base this time, though, he'll at least see the carriers, which would be critical, right? Uh, but no, he's actually just going to siege up on the side here. Man, this is so annoying, though. For Bonnet, like even if it doesn't do significant damage, just like I, I would just be frustrated playing against it. You know, it's like when there's like you know a, a mosquito in your room or a housefly. Okay, the mosquito is not gonna kill you, but it's freaking annoying. Buzzing around in the ear. Oh, he's gonna pick up the wraith. Ooh, one hit. Now the reason why this shouldn't be too annoying for him to deal with is he has a speed shuttle. He can just, yeah, he's actually gonna send one dragoon back in the speed shuttle to go kill it. Oh, uh, he scanned the carriers. He scanned it. Ooh, that was a good scan. Now, how is he going to react? He, sh he needs to start pumping nine, nine pack Goliath, but he doesn't have his third gas yet. And this is a big detrimental factor for him in this game. Now, one of the interesting things is, look at where Alplay dropped the second tank from that dropship. He's denying the yeah. bottom left bases. That but is the Bonif actually isn't so going to go smart. for them. Like, Bonith just needs minerals at this point. He's getting the gas for the carriers anyway on his three gas. So he doesn't need to expand again right now. And weirdly enough, Bonith is actually supply blocked, so he can't add an extra carrier on. Yeah. 
But here comes the main attack. That tank, by the way, is so cool. That's like the, pro the equivalent of a, a Protoss putting a DT at an expansion to block it, because that's going to one-shot the probes, and Bonnet's not going to realize why his pro like the probe he sends to expand isn't expanding. But as you said, it's probably not going to happen for a little while. There's a scan. He sees the first three carries. He sees the positioning of the army. He's actually just going for it. Even the Wraith is coming down here. He's got almost everything on siege. Only the leading tanks are on siege, and this is going to be a critical fight here. Looks like the Zealots still don't have... No, they do have speed this time, and there's no cover he for the tanks! Oh yeah, my he God. shouldn't have moved forward. Pushing in like this is just not the best decision. And a mind drag kills three tanks. Oh my God. Well, rest in peace, like, Darren. He okay. So he scanned the carriers. Did you actually see if he saw the three carriers? He saw because the if three he carriers. Saw, yes. Okay. If he saw the three carriers, that was the most bizarre movement I have ever seen from a Terran player. He had <laughs> one oh, Goliath. No. One Wraith, and they're going to find this uh, hidden base as well. One Goliath, one Wraith, and four Marines against three carriers. And now he has no tanks, and the Dragoons are just going to barrel down on the front of these Goliaths, and Alplay can do absolutely nothing about it. Man. Is there an ops there? Maybe, maybe he was hoping yeah, that the carriers just spawned and didn't have any interceptors. So he had a chance to hit before the, the carriers were ready, but obviously that wasn't the case. He's gonna lose this ex uh, command center. I like oh, oh no, carrier, carrier interception in the map. Oh, they hit on the dragoons. Oh my god, and the high ground saves the carrier. Wait, oh, thing. the last shot kicks picked off that carry. He changed targets halfway through. I thought he was gonna make a mistake there, but he does pick off at least one. But look at the supplies: 181 to just 100. Bonnet floating a little bit of money. Um, did he actually get a probe down to the bottom left main? Somehow there's a brown dot there, but I don't know if that's just a shuttle or something. Uh, it's no, a it's zealot. zealot. Okay. Yeah, the the crazy thing is as well, Gar or Alplay is on 2k minerals, or he was, and he's not spamming turrets. Like, he needs to be spamming turrets right now. He may lose the game anyway, but all you can really do, oh my god, there's a zealot at the top left base. It does die to SCVs though, but Alplay is so dead. He is so unbelievably dead right now. 100 supply down against carriers. No, only two tanks against uh, about 10 dragoons. Yeah. This is most certainly game over for our play. And GG from our play. Bonneth takes the first game, but it is a best of three. This is the second semi final match. The winner of this best of three will face Terror in the finals. And it looks like we are going Tau Cross for the second game. Oh man, and in the top right position as the Yellow Terran, we do have our play, aka Gargoyle, who's down 0-1 in this series. Then up 1-0 in the series, his opponent, Red Spawneth, in the green. Wait, this is pretty much the same spawns. Terran top right, Protoss bottom right. Dude, StarCraft confirmed rigged. Most certainly, bottom right, like, Bottom right is the Protoss spawn. I know where to scout now. In the <laughs> TVP, I'm just gonna go bottom right every time. Thank you to uh, Iwakos, by the way, for the 10 pound donation. Very generous. Uh, I do have my sub alerts turned off, but I did I did see that. So thank you so much, my friend. Iwakos, a regular donator on the stream. It's an awesome dude. And a regular player in all the tournaments as well. He signs up for pretty much everything, I think. Yeah, he did have that period, though, where he'd play the one game and then disappear. Yeah. So I'm not sure what was going on there. I think his internet was a little bit dodgy, I guess. Okay, no proxy gates, so fairly normal start for both players. Now, it's a little bit more risky to go for the one Rax expand on this map, so I'm not sure if our play will do it again. But it's also hard to see to expand on this map too, so... Yep, it is indeed. Um, I really liked Terror's play on this map, you know, uh, going for... The six pack. Did, wait, was it? Uh, did he two pack into six pack? Was that what it was? I believe so. Okay. I know he definitely had six pack at yeah. the end before he got his third base. So. Yeah, and that was against uh, against Draco on this map, guys. For anyone who's just tuning in, we did have a couple of Draco games, although unfortunately uh, he did get knocked out. He what? He had been streaming for something like eight hours or something, so he was pretty tired at that point, um, and just decided to call it a day. But yeah, definitely some awesome, awesome players. Uh, in the tournament. And yeah, just to let the person in chat know, uh, that is how he beat Draco. <laughs> beat him with a six pack on this map, so pretty good. But we do see the barracks and the gas coming up. 
Now, is this going to be for an FD or is it going to be for a Siege Expand? Now, the reason why Siege Expand is a little bit harder to do is it's very actually hard to get your tank up into a position where it can attack the goons. Mm. So it all depends on whether or not he pulls off of a gas on 88. On 88, good old kicks letting us know those timings. Okay, uh, I think it's an FD. Wait, but he's not pulling at all, though. Yeah, exactly. It's either FD or two fact, but I think fake double is more likely. But surely you pull for an FD, don't you? No, you get the. I believe you get the factory, then the shop, and the first tank, then you pull out. Huh. But I, I think it's just going to be a two fact, probably. Yeah. We've seen a lot of two fact today, which is really weird because for the longest time, two fact against Protoss has just been super weak because it's yeah. very easy to defend. Like, if you, if you prepare for it, it is. I mean, I wouldn't say it's super easy, but yes, it's definitely one of those builds that, you know, it's been done enough that people uh, have have a decent response for it. But we're facing a two-gate uh, from Bonnet, and I do like that on Tau Cross with the lack of rams can definitely put on some pressure. And we'll see. No, it's going to be a starport, I think, Kicks. Look at that positioning of the SEV. Our play going one fact, one port here. Mmm. That is really interesting. Uh, you can get a dropship super early. I mean, he may just be going for a tank drop on the natural. But Bonith is going two gate, two gate range, two is... gate power goon. Yeah, is our play just gonna die to this? <laughs> is he gonna have enough units to not die? He's only on two I don't marines. Think he is. He's gonna go vultures as well. I'm fairly certain he's gonna go for vulture mines. Uh oh. And he's gonna die. Uh oh. He was hoping it was going to be a one gate expand for Bonneth, in which case the drop could be very deadly. But instead, it's a two gate, and the two gate could just get. Now, he, he, he might lay defensive mines in his main to stop the, the goons. So it might come down to how good Bonneth's uh, anti mine micro is, and also whether, whether our play can disrupt the micro by using his Marines to block it. Ooh, the pylon block! Oh my god, this is so important. But he's going to know some of cheese is going on, that's the thing. He stops something coming in, but then that just makes it more obvious. It's like when they leave a Dragoon on their ramp on Fighting Spirit. No, it was actually a tank. He's getting a tank. Is he getting Siege, though? Uh, I saw his gas go down. I, I guess it is Siege, but it could wait, be an FD. Why would it be Siege, though? Surely it's Mines follow-up with the Vulture follow-up with Mines. I guess it depends. If he was going for the uh, tank drop on the cliff. But oh my god, they're going to loop past each other. He's not going to have any units in his main to defend. The, yeah, the oh, vulture came no. out. I think he was going for a strong FD with a drop shift as well. You wow. can actually elevate or a strong FD into his base, but I think he's just going to die. Oh no. I he's... feel so bad for Gargoyle right now. <laughs> he's not even pulling back. He's just going straight for the attack here while the goons walk into his base and kill everything. He, his first vulture got slammed, so he wasn't even able to uh, lay defensive mines. The dropship comes out, but it's obviously completely useless. SCB is fighting against the Dragoons. Can he lay any mines? The vulture's targeting. No, the Dragoons target down the, the vulture. The Marines with the tank are back there. There are two goons here. And I don't think that's enough Terran army to actually do anything. He's losing all the SCVs in his main base. Bonneth looks like he's going to be able to hold this off with the Pro Bowl. He should be absolutely fine. But a nice target fire is going to pick off one of the Dragoons. It is. But GG. And that will make Red Bonneth our second finalist. So we will go on to a PBT final between Bonneth and Terra. So pretty crazy matchup there.